Hey guys, welcome to this week's Wolves Community Blog. I almost said Imperium Galactic Survival. It's been one of those days, guys. I just woke up not too long ago. Well, I'm glad you guys decided to join us. Um, we're going to be talking about Imperion, of course. You know, we got a lot to discuss about that game. But we're also going to be talking about some 70 Days to Die today and uh, some other topics, including subsistence. But uh, right now, I started posting up myself some videos of our starter vessels that some of these guys designed and built, and I'm just, I'm still flabbergasted about them. They're amazing. Um, so if you want to actually go and be able to see those, you can see those on my channel right now. The there's the first two showcases are up for the first two vessels. I believe they are the the bull starter vessel and the freelancer starter vessel. I think tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be the nomads. Let me double check here. Uh, yes, tomorrow's will be. No, excuse me, Wednesdays will be the space nomads. Now that one there is an interesting one. You guys are definitely going to check that out. But as for who we have today, we have myself, the Wolf. We are also here with Magic Slayer. Hey. We have Spenge. Howdy. And the Inverted Cow. Hello. And Dreamweaver. Hello. And Wallenstein too. And we got Wallenstein. I'm here. Wally. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the Wallenstein. Yeah. <laughs> How many of you guys have actually seen the starter vessels those guys built uh, that Wallenstein, Rally, and Thor worked on? Yes. Give us your opinion. I've already seen the military police one. What do you think? Um, up to Wally's usual standard and better, in all fairness. Yeah, they look awesome. Yep. Now, how are we feeling about ships that small being allowed to have the mounted weapons? Don't mind so long as they're, you know, we say within a reasonable amount of. I think. What did you have on the disperser? Was it four? Yeah, there was four on that one. Yeah. But that, that's for a military ship, so yeah, I'll go with yes on that one. But something like a freelancer or, um, well, someone who's not combat orientated, shall we say, probably less. No, I say for everybody the same. No, it can't be completely equal depending on the vessels because then it would unbalance when, the gameplay. When I have when, four. when I have money, I can buy. You must make make this weapons expensive. Well, it's whatever the in-game price content is going to be because I'm no longer going to be setting prices. We're going to, it's all going to be based off of how much the traders are selling at their trade stations. So it's not going to be, oh, it's too expensive. And it, well, not, you know what? It's whatever the developers set the traders to sell for. That's what the prices are going to be for everything. <laughs> yeah. No more arguing. No more conflicts. No more it's too expensive or that one's too cheap. It's whatever the in-game price is going to be. Unless we find out it's really that broken. Then we'll uh, go back. Oh, you must, or, or you must get a license to build. You know, that's an interesting thought. Implementing the licensing on our server. Yeah, how would that work with the pirates? The pirates do whatever they want. No, yeah. they must get the license. You can't have a license oh, to pirates. pirates. <laughs> <laughs> pirate pirate license. license. Oh, hang on, pirates. chaps. I can't the go and finish that POI right now. I need a license to do it. Yes. <laughs> oh. license. Hmm. Without a license. I'll get rock of the communism 101. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. When, the, the, when you have this weapon on your ship uh, and you have no license, the police hunt you down. You do anyway, the pirates. <laughs> they do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the same goes with the mercs, Everybody right? Because, I mean, the police hunt me down anyhow. Well, no, what I, what I think we're getting at here is a limiting of weapon balance, which I guess licensing could help and work in that advantage. So let's, let's say, for instance, it's uh, 1 million credits for a license to have one mounted weapon. So in order to have two, you would have to spend two million credits in order to have two mounted weapons to be able to use on your ships. 
it, it could add an aspect for us to control the amount of mounted weapons we have per ship. So you got, if you're making good money and stuff, and you're actually using your money, you could buy up to uh, 20 licenses on a, mech, uh, a mega capital ship and have 20 mounted rocket launchers, kind of thing. I, I, don't, I don't know if mounted weapons are really worth that much, though. Oh, they're no, not. they're not. They're, 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 so they're, they're why... more than 500 times the price of a mounted weapon, so it's a little ridiculous, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I was just there going to figure just out thinking. there. Just a way of, it, it just thoughts and ideas, that's all. Nothing. We're, remember, everything we discuss here isn't permanent unless we say it's actually the rules. It's all just discussion, yeah. topics, ideas. It can actually... Hope the reason why we do it is so it instills other ideas and topics. To, well, like this one could be totally bogus and make no sense, but it spawns an idea in another aspect that actually works great. I mean, that's 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 the whole point of us just talking about everything, so that way we, we get that balance that we need on the server. Yep, yeah, sure. So, Ollie, uh, stop eating your microphone. Yeah, stop eating your what? microphone. Your microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh. I hope we haven't lost Wally now. No, nope. uh, there's his bag. I should stop. No, he's back. I, I, I stop eating. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> the last one was cool. No, no, no. Could be a new game. Guess what Wally's eating? Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know it. Crisps. I'm, yeah, I was, gonna, I was just going to say, some kind of potato chips. No. Nope. Mm. One, one, one thing is our community blogs might actually be going more than once a week. People seem to be enjoying them, so we might do maybe two a week now, depending on how we feel and where we're at with things, uh, to give you guys the updated news. Um, for instance, the map system that me and Magic have been struggling with and working on is nearing a uh, completion phase. We're on the touch-up phase on most everything now. Making sure this works, making sure that's right, making sure that this planet actually has all the parts and pieces we wanted it to have. So, I mean, the planets are up and running, they're actually working. Um, Yay! Um, I will be implementing those on the server, if not today, tomorrow, for everyone to test out and see how they go. So this week will be our testing week, everyone will be on the server, so if you're a community member, you will be actually be able to go and see the new map, the, the new planets, and start testing it out. So you'll actually have a, a leg up on what planets are where, what kind of stuff's on what kind of planet, how they work, and how devastating these uh, brand new planets we made that are Jupiter sized, which are awesome. So that'll, Good. that'll be awesome to start being able to get that tested out so we can hash out all the bugs before we actually go into final release, which we're hoping to be not this week, but next Monday or this weekend. Gravity is too high. Oh, Wally. I'm, you know what? <laughs> we're going to add gravity to your asteroid field. No. Yay. No. And make no, it right. permanently black. Get rid of his son. Yeah. Keep complaining. Keep complaining. <laughs> it could always no. get worse. <laughs> no, I, 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 it's only a thought that the gravity is too high. You don't, you don't can live on a planet with this. Gravity. You're not supposed to live on the Jupiter planets. You will die. Yeah, You're you only die. there to mine and, and get the hell off before you do. You, it, you die you by think, your mining. You rock thing back there, you just burn over. You forget the way that we're mining isn't by hand. You're not going to go down there and mine by hand, you'll just die. You have to build your mining facility so you're safe, for one, and you're going to be using auto miners to mine. Yep. But now, throw it, there throw it there is asteroid away. fields that will fall on the planet that you can go and mine. <laughs> Heck. But you will do that with hover vessels. You're not going to do that with a drill. No. So you have as what? long as you can keep O2 in your tanks of your hover vessel and keep yourself alive to mine whatever you can around the planet before you die, before you can get back to your mining facility. I don't say nothing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's just the way it is. That is... You say that we make things uh, possible like in real life. Right. You're not going to go yeah. on Jupiter and start mining. Yeah, you don't go to a planet with 15, 15 or 20 G. You don't can breathe there. 
your your whole body in, 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 implodes. You so big as a, a dime on this planet. Very true, but this is still a game. Yeah, yeah okay. it turned into a greasy, mushy spot on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bones turn to powder and dust as your skin just piles into a nice folded t-shirt on the floor. It's, o it's only a, a, a wet a wet fleck on the ground. Yep. Well, see, if if, uh, if if this game was all... If you could only visit the Goldilocks Zone planets, this game Boring. would be incredibly short. I uh -huh. mean, it would be one planet like in an entire galaxy that you know is quite is possible to to do it to, to go on to in mine so we, we need to have some degree of hardness anyway otherwise i'll get bored boring. yeah yeah and you That's... say you don't can uh, go with uh, with the capital vessels to the planet no, you, can go ones. Ones. you can go down to the planet ones. with a yeah. capital vessel to how else are you gonna do it you go down there, you drop off your hover vessels to your mining facilities, then you go back into space with your CV after you load everything up. Now you can go back to the space. Then yeah. is it okay? Yeah, you so just have you to... must every time build something on the planet so that you can mine. No, you yeah, build yeah. a mining facility, you actually have to build yeah. a mining base on a planet in order to be allowed to mine, period. Yeah, you yeah. Must, I, I thought you must build the Uber vessel too and everything. Yeah, you can. You have to have a hover vessel in order to go mine the stuff on the planet. You just can't mine the deposit. You mine the asteroids. The deposits you have to put auto miners on. There's very few deposits of actual minerals on these planets. There's enough to where four factions can fight over these the the planet itself for the deposits. So you could build your, your mining facility, you don't even know that anybody else is on that planet with you at the time. They'll be building their mining facility on the other side of the planet on a different deposit. So they're out mining with their, their hover vessel, the, the asteroids that have fallen. And then they come across another group on the planet in another hover vessel, you're, you're, you're fighting each other. You're not going to oh, be on oh. that, because the moment you see another faction, you're at war. How many the planet. planets we have? Four of the actual mining planets that are hardcore... And then there's two, four, six, eight of the regular planets that are still a little difficult, but not so bad. That are still fight o uh, that will still be fought over for the minerals as well. There's still only four deposits on every planet. That's it. So none of those nice. you can mine out physically. You have to use auto miners only. So you'll build the mining base, put an auto miner on it, and then you can actually go physically mine all the asteroids that fall around the planet. Yeah. But you have four starter planets, and then how many prey planets? You got four starter. You got five starter planets. Oh, and, five. Yeah, just get the mercenaries now. So you got five I, starter I, I saw, planets. I, you have yeah. four Jupiter class planets, and then you have eight regular planets. Oh, oh it's a little bit smaller than the last. Uh, one. It, it is smaller in in essence than the last one. So there's really the the four big planets have the two smaller planets in the play field. So each play field has the three planets on it. So there's the Jupiter planet and it's three basically satellites, which are the two other planets. Oh. Oh, so, SVs and separated uh, everything is an asteroid field. SVs are more essential yes. now. Yes, yes more absolutely. Useful. So when you're actually in, inside the play field with a Jupiter planet with two satellites, you're not going to be using a capital vessel to transport goods from planet to planet in that play field. You'll be using your small vessels to go from the Jupiter planet, drop off your resources on whatever other planet you use as your main planet of operations. Mm. And then from there, you're going to be taking all your resources back to your home world in order to produce more of your, your building, of your, your bases and your HVs and your SVs and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Now, there will be no blueprints allowed on the server this time around. So you will not be able to spawn in blueprints. The only people, only, only. only person that can spawn in blueprints is Wallenstein. That way, if you really do want that second copy of a vessel you built, you have to go to Wallenstein and actually pay for it. There is no honor system in this value anymore. So, you want that second hover vessel... Uh, uh, vehicle that's exactly the same, you go to Wallenstein. Otherwise, you go back to your home world and build it. 
to your home world? Yep, everything is done for factions is your home world, is your base of operations. You want to make that planet safe, you want to make it as secure as possible, you want to build cities on there that are protected, you want storage bunkers that house all of your, your cash and, and goods. And ships they can build too? Yes, everybody can build their ships, but there's no blueprints. Oh. So if they build their ships themselves, then they're not using a blueprint. Oh, okay. So in order to get a second exact copy, like I say, we want five gunboats in the military faction for one. So we could build the first one if we wanted to, but it, it wouldn't be exactly the same as the second one we built. So in order to have five of them, we'd actually have to come to you, pay for you, pay you for all five of them. And then you uh -huh. could pay another uh, faction to go mine the resources for you to build your ships or whatever you're doing over there. So you'd be hiring the mercenaries and the freelancers, even the police or the nomads, whoever, to actually mine resources and give them to you. Oh, I'm curious. That way you have a mass stockpile of resources. So at the very beginning of the game, <laughs> the first thing you're going to want to do is mine gold. Yeah. Or pay somebody okay, so to mine gold. It for you. Yeah. And gold is on this... Oh, on on this uh, nah, planet. Horrible planet. Yeah, you don't like it. <laughs> on this awful planet. Yep. I mean, every faction is gonna. The first thing they're gonna do is true whatever it takes to get off of their home world, so that way they can get over to the start mining gold, so that way they can start buying stuff. Because it's gonna be a fight for every planet and every resource. Trust me. Because not everyone's gonna want to have to pay the freelancer for fuel because they have it all. They have the, if I'm not mistaken, I think we switched it up. They have the Pentaxid and the Prometheum in their territory. All right, that's it. Or on their side of the galaxy, or their solar system, I should say. So, no matter what, on that Jupiter planet, people are going to be fighting over that. Even us. We're going to be on there trying to mine it ourselves. Yeah. Now, at this point, once a week, the four asteroid fields that are around the sun, the asteroid belt, will be reset every week. Um, Sunday night or Monday morning, um, unless I can find a way to make it re regenerate themselves, that would be freaking awesome. The asteroids now do update. regenerate. They do? Yep, latest yep. update, the one that's just been released. Oh, thank you, developer gods. <laughs> I'll let you know when I, I can get back in and go see if that's uh, We will there. be fiddling with those settings today in... Um, adjusting them so that way they do them on their own. Oh, I'll be so happy for that. I see. Developers, I have never been so happy. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, so, when it comes to the Jupiter mining facilities, you're going to be have you're going to want forges on there, not just regular constructors. Forges are going to be a mandatory part of base building mining facilities. Uh, forge in the furnace, yeah. The furnace, yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no worries. I'll make sure I didn't miss the device. Those things are brutal, too. You you cannot stand near them. <laughs> I know. Ridiculously hot. So when it comes to hmm. mining facilities, you have to you, you, you want to think of a mining facility. You want it designed to be a mining base. You want it to be defendable because if another faction's on the planet mining the same thing, they're going to come over and just wipe you out if you only got like four turrets sitting on it. And then you're screwed. You lost all your resources, and the other faction got it, and now they hold the planet. The ships come back and kick them back off the planet. Right? That's right. As long as you keep ample uh, supply of funds in your uh, faction, or for yourself, if you're uh, a lone wolf, you'll just be able to go to Wallenstein and rebuy your ships and go back and kick their butt off the planet yourself, and then build an actual base that will defend itself. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> or, or hire the appropriate individuals to assist in your defense anyway. Yeah, exactly. there is a... Um, Not that they're there for that purpose or anything. Now, be uh, forewarned, everyone hiring mercenaries will not be a cheap venture. They are going to, they're actually more expensive than hiring the police to do any patrols and stuff like that. Because the mercenaries are full time. You pay them to do something, they're going to do it. So if you pay them to protect a mining facility and mine that facility for you, 
they will be there full time doing so until you stop paying them and it will be a daily payment that you pay them so they are going to be a rich faction when it comes to paying them to do things <laughs> if anybody pays them to do anything that's also true yeah. the other side of the coin is if nobody pays them to do anything they're just stuck sitting there twiddling their thumbs and mining asteroids all the time which will like or the long hunting run. people for fun and amusement only if you want to what? get banned from the server. So, That's so what happens if you pay a mercenary to do something and then they get killed trying to do it? You don't they, still pay them, right? they still get paid. They still get paid. It will be negotiated in the terms of contract. <laughs> There's going to be set prices, and it's just going to be the way it is. It's going to be set prices on different type of functions you can pay them to do. You pay them for that function, they do that function. It's that simple. You have, you're paying them for defending a specific facility of yours, they will be paid a specific amount daily to protect that said facility. The moment you don't make that payment on a certain day, they can rob you blind and leave. Extract payment in credit and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> Not rob you blind. Yes. Correct. Uh, everybody needs to remember that the mercenary faction is a new faction, so there's going to be a lot of changes here and there as it develops. So nothing is set in stone as it goes until it's we get it balanced out to the way it works. My asteroid field is milk free. Yes. Who expensive? <laughs> uh, Who'll be the richest man around getting all this stuff? Now, on another note, Seven Days to Die's Alpha has got to be getting close. I could feel it. The, I, I, I saw the new Vulture model, and it was just absolutely amazing. And it was huge. So that has got me a little freaked out. I am so looking forward to Seven Days to Die. I cannot wait until they release it. And we start doing our new season on it. It's going to be amazing. Um, we even got Dream Reaver to play it one day. Three and a half hours. <laughs> I noticed it earlier in my Steam thing. So, yeah, three and a half hours. And in all fairness, I spent the first half an hour trying to avoid waterborne spiders that can eat you in the water, chase you on the land, then eat you on the land. Well, you got to remember, uh, it was a, it was the uh, starvation mod, so it wasn't the actual core game. That yes, was yes. that mod is ridiculously hard, and it's a lot of fun too. We couldn't get it on our servers because uh, the ones that we're using for Seven Days to Ride and Die right now are rented, and the company that we had at the moment didn't want to allow us to use the Starvation mod. Uh, so, problem, yes. so we put it back off. We were going to start recording and doing a Starvation mod series for you guys, but then they wouldn't allow us to have it on our servers, and we couldn't do it. So, yeah. The regular ones doesn't have those. As soon as they drop the Alpha, um, Alpha 16, I think it is, it's coming, if I'm not mistaken, on the top of my head here. Yeah, Alpha 16 okay. is the newest update. As soon as they drop that, um, we're going to be all over it. Like, why are we going to be doing, are we going to be doing, like, a couple of days of a week on that sort of thing, or? Um, yeah. Any yeah. set ideas for that? Uh, we'll probably be, uh, recording a couple episodes every couple of days. So, let's say, for instance, we'd be playing Imperium Monday and Tuesday, and then maybe Wednesday we'll play a day of Seven Days to Die, then Thursday back on Imperium, and Friday back on Seven Days to Die for a while. You know, just back and forth whenever we feel like uh -huh. it. Like always, you know, it's a feeling. We don't do set schedules. We do do set releases, though. Um, when we play, we play hardcore. We can't just do 30 minutes. I'm sorry, guys. I don't, I, you know, I don't care what other YouTubers say. It's impossible to play just 30 minutes of Seven Days to Die and walk away from it. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> I mean, when the first Alpha, when an Alpha releases, I'm on it for like 12 hours straight. So I'll have like two weeks of videos for you guys just ready to rock and roll. And I don't like editing out um, things on the videos that are, are, are funny and stuff like that. So you get straight playthroughs just like as if it was your own. You know, you're not going to miss out on anything. Um, so when it comes to all these new... I mean, I'm looking at the list right now. Uh, the new features that are coming. I can't wait for electricity. It's going to be freaking awesome. The, the the powered traps that chop zombies, burn them, and the, uh, the way you can run the wires, the switches and relays, and pressure plates, and, and actually set up your own functions and stuff will be cool as can be. And I love the way that you can actually use solar panels. 
so you can actually make your own electricity. That's new. Well, all of it's new. If they got the jail cell doors, we can actually make brigs. Right. <laughs> nice. Lock magic in it. Every time you make yeah. it. Yeah. Lock it in. No, I, I would be perpetually in the prison. Exactly. <laughs> but at least the server would run it. But uh, a lot of the new blocks <laughs> that they're giving us are pretty cool too. We got the iron bar block with outside, center, and inside edge rotations, which is amazing. We don't have to put them right dead smack in the middle anymore. We got the outside corner stairs. Um, and the new painting system, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to be able to actually decorate better. Bulletproof glass, that one's gonna be fun. Now, I still don't understand the rain gutters. I haven't really got, been able to. I, I like to be surprised a lot, so normally I don't even look at the patch notes that much. Um, because I like to go into the new alphas and just enjoy the excitement of finding new things. Um, so I have no idea what the rain gutters are for. I'm guessing it's for uh, making a, a way of collecting water. I don't know. I have no idea. Yes. But what I'm looking forward to myself is the compound bow. I am going to love having a new bow to play with. Electric fences, auto turrets, Molotov cocktails, arrow traps, say, spinning blade traps. Also turrets, as in like a turret in the period. It's just AI controlled, yeah? Yeah, it's an auto just turret. Just shoots the closest target. Yeah, that's what it says. Okay. We got new and redone animals. They've replaced the bears, they're replacing the pigs. Uh, but it looks like it says might be post launch Alpha 16. Um, the Hornet is now a zombie vulture, which the, the zombie vulture is horrific and awesome looking. Snakes to the deserts and plains, wolves to appropriate areas. Um, I do remember hearing a uh, something about uh, being able to tame, but I don't have any definite information about that, so I'm not going to say it is, but I heard that you'll be able to tame a wolf. Oh, nice. So you can actually have a little friend to follow you around, which would actually be really cool. I actually like that idea. And no, it was not an April Fool's joke. I know that for a fact. <clears throat> Whether they're going to actually allow the taming in the uh, Alpha 16 update or not, I'm not sure. Do, will they have purchasable, purchasable in-game pets? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I know, uh, I, I know they, they, they added that to the patch notes in Imperion on April 1st. First was was, pets. That was hilarious. That actually oh, had me wow. crack it up. <clears throat> now, they have a uh, fat Hawaiian shirt zombie is back. The feral versions of every zombie that have more HP, hit harder, and run during the day. That's going to be interesting. There's a new ferals. Radioactive zombies that heal over time. That Ooh, nice. It might be post-launch Alpha 16, but that sounds awesome. Various UMA zombies converted to handmade. Confirmed for Alpha 16. So how, how long ha have we been waiting for Alpha 16? I lost count in the months. Almost feels like years. <laughs> Alpha 16 began development on October 6, 2016. Wow. What year is it now? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit past that, don't we? Oh, come on. They need to drop the update so we can actually have some fun. I have been missing Seven Days to Die so much. It's killing me. I mean, I'm, I'm to the point where I actually might start playing Seven Days to Die anyways as a new start, just until it comes out. The regular Seven Days to Die, mind you. Uh-huh. Well, I'd, I'd love the Starvation mod, the only problem is I can't record it. For some reason, it will not mash up with my uh, OBS. Well, that's just because you have magic pixie dust coming out your ass, and it causes problems, I don't understand. <laughs> It's almost as bad Hi, as... Hi, uh, unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, the, uh, on an off-topic note, uh, a single-player game, 
Subsistence. Wow. Let me tell you, that game is a lot of fun. I've actually been enjoying that a lot myself. Magic just got himself a free copy of it today. I'm out of here. Thank you, by the way. Bye, Wallace. Well, time. That's not that game. is not my my game. Well, it is a lot of other people, so that's why it's going to get talked about. Just, I've actually oh, enjoyed yeah. it a lot. It's got a lot to give. Cold Games is a single developer doing it by himself and doing an epic job, by the way. I hope you catch this and actually hear it for yourself. You've done an amazing job on this game. And from the updates and the list that goes on to it, I have enjoyed it immensely. Um, I have only just started doing a season, uh, a season one on it, but yeah, I don't have much time in my life outside of dealing with the servers and uh, creating these planets and all this all this stuff that we do all the time but I had to it was just an amazing game and I've enjoyed every minute I've been able to put into it um, the only complaint I do have is man does it take forever to get wood <laughs> the, oh, the, something you from the, book. The, the base building is amazing I love it but does it take so much wood gathering and just time I mean I've, I'll spend four days in game just gathering wood to get like four stacks of uh, 50 of the wood logs to get uh, 100 wooden planks just so I can start building base pieces that take two to f uh, four planks to make one piece. It's like, Ugh! but it's it, it's still, it, it creates a, 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 dynamic, a dynamic of uh, urgency to do it that way. So it's actually a, a, an awesome thing. Don't change it, whatever you do, it's hard. It's actually survival and that's what I like about it. You always feel like you're, you're you're missing something, and or you're running short on something, and you've got to grind this out in order to make it so you don't fall into a, a slump where you have no ammo, for instance, which has happened to me on many occasions. Uh, the one thing I do love about the game is that if you start trying to get chickens at the beginning and you're chasing them, they always run right to the bear's mouth. So you can chase the chicken, <laughs> and he just leads you right to the bear, and you get eaten by the bear. It's it, 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 it's hilarious. I love it. I'm, 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 I was almost tempted to change my, my name to Mad Hatter because I was going ballistic over chasing chickens at the beginning of the game. I mean, I was going mad because I couldn't catch a chicken. By the time I caught a chicken, a bear would eat me, and then I would lose a chicken. Like, I do love the new 44 revolver. That thing is amazing. It is awesome. I can't wait till I get it upgraded and start using it more. Um, just there's just so much to it the way the power system works and the mass production and everything how it all goes is is very well balanced out this guy is very intelligent when it comes to what he's doing and what he's building especially i gotta give him props he's all by himself he's doing this by himself and he's made an amazing game doing it but, so anyone else here actually been able to play that game yet subsistence uh huh. Um, just looking it up now. I will be able to after after we finish. You're welcome, by the way. <laughs> I'm just having a quick look at it. Oh, sorry. Be right back. I got a message. A message. I was just asked um, if I ever thought about doing live stuff. Well, on that topic, actually, the only reason why I don't live stream myself is my internet is not fast enough for it. It creates delays and lags, and it's just it's disgustingly horrible. I can't stand it. I can broadcast through Steam just fine, but I can't Twitch. Go figure. <laughs> Yeah, it's horribly, sorry, hor horrible latency problems. But first of all, guys, are those of you out there that haven't tried it out or ever played Seven Days to Die, it is a must game. I am 100% behind Seven Days to Die. I will always be behind Seven Days to Die. I support them 100%, so does the entire community. It is actually 
one of our base games in our community was built on was Seven Days to Die, and I will stand behind it firmly 100%, even if they stop developing it. I will still stand behind this game. It is a great game to play, even in the state that it's in now. It is not broken. It's not falling apart. It's just an amazing fun adventure from beginning to end. And it never gets stale. It really, you know, you can build this all you want, but you still have to maintain the sense of the urgency you feel of trying to keep your base up to par so it doesn't get broken into. Uh, and when it comes to subsistence, we... the same thing. Uh, Go ahead, Dream, sorry. I was, I was just saying, subsistence currently is only a single player. Yes, at this point it is only a single player game. He is going to be making it multiplayer, and believe me, when it does, everybody that's, that's been out there following this game is going to be on it like mad. I will even be uh, setting it up so we have multiplayer because it's just an, it really is an awesome game. And I'm standing behind Cold Games on that one too. Um, the subsistence has just it's been blowing me away since it came out and I'm glad I'm finally able to get some time and I can actually play it. Um, when multiplayer definitely hits, I'm going to be setting that up so we can all be playing that as well. It's more of a spare time kind of thing. Whenever I get it, I get in there and I play that game. I, I get into it. I don't stop. I have to, you know, dinner comes around. My wife's like, come eat with dinner with the family. I'll be right there one more minute. As I'm chopping one more tree just to get that four more logs before I have to go eat dinner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've been there, done that. Other games. Two minutes. Just give me two minutes. I'll be right with you. Ah. It's definitely an enticing game once you get started. It's hard to pull yourself away from it because you got that one more thing you have to do it all the time. It's amazing. I love games that draw you in like that. And it definitely, definitely does. It really does. Um, it's got that drive, and, and no matter where you're at, you always have that one more thing that you tell yourself you have to do. you got to get this one more thing done, whether it be feeding the chickens, keeping them fed and watered, or the garden or your own self, like uh, making sure you have a biofuel to keep the generators running when you need them. It's just... I just, I just check something here? Yeah. Is subsistence the game where your daughter does better than you? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. That's, I just wanted to check. Make sure I it was actually right had my five-year-old daughter playing the game with me the other day. <laughs> you know, all I was doing was gathering wood and stuff, and she got, she got into it. She was over here. She was directing my character where to go, and I, I just, I let her play, and we were just going around collecting. Not once did I get eaten by a bear. Not once did I come across a hunter. I, every rabbit and every chicken that we came across got caught within seconds. I don't know how oh, she, she does was better than you. <laughs> but she plays the game like it's the easiest thing in the world. Yep, and she doesn't get it. And, and it never gets eaten, never dies. I'm just like, wow. The moment she walks away, I got eaten by a bear. <laughs> Yeah. Like, oh, Better a good luck, Sean, or uh, she's really good at it. <laughs> oh no, she she knows what she's doing. She goes, "Don't go that way, go that way." And she's like, "There's a crate, go get crate. There's 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 rocks, go get the rocks." And she tells me exactly <laughs> where to go, and she'll tell me, and I'll and, and I'll go straight for the crate, and there'll be like a wolf track from between me and the crate. She's like, "No, go round the the, the wolf." I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> But she definitely loves that game. My son, however, on the other hand, he's obsessed with Seven Days to Die. And uh, my oldest boy. And my youngest is, in, and uh, Aria, the oldest, my oldest daughter, which is five. My youngest son is three, uh, three going on four. They are both are obsessed with Imperion. They love that game. When a ship starts getting blown up, my, when we were recording that one episode with Valhalla and uh, uh, the Grendel, they they, yeah, yeah. they sat there just jaw dropped the whole time we were recording that. They loved it. <laughs> yeah, it would have been fine if my guns could shoot. Oh, and when we did the uh, trademark <laughs> gone bad episodes where the pirates were actually involved, man, they yeah they were sitting in the chair here like quiet as a mouse. They didn't interrupt the recording, but they were just like <gasps> just looking at the screen, their mouths wide open, wide eyed, just amazed. <laughs> I'll be it. I'll be it. No, you can't. As much as I like the idea of playing other survival games, um, me at the moment, being is the one. I'm not going to take too much time off of that, but I oh. will give Seven Days to Die another try. Oh no, we are um, not going to be backing off of Imperion. I, I'm sorry, I don't. It, 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 there's just no way that's going to happen. This is our lifeblood. We enjoy this game. You know, we've spent more time 
developing this game on our end for ourselves when it comes to making our own scenarios, designing our own planets and everything, it, it's just, there, there's no way in God's green earth that we're going to take any time away from this game except to maybe take a break from building and go play some Seven Days to Die and then we'll come back and, and, and go right back to it. You know, it's not good. The other games do not interfere with our, our daily recordings of, of Imperion for you guys. Do not worry about that. Imperion will be released daily forever when it comes to our channels. Um, now, subsistence, I'm going to keep it going as daily as possible as long as I can when it comes to 7 Days to Die. That will be released either daily or every other day, depending on how much content we got. But like I said, when Alpha 16 hits, it will absolutely be daily. I can promise you that, hands down, without a, without a doubt. And I will stay on Magic's butt to make sure he is there to record as well and have daily videos to put out there for you guys. Because <laughs> it, it's just an amazing game. You have to. You know, you can't walk away from that one. Um, oh, we'll see. Dream we'll see if I get involved. Is a rare cookie. Yeah. You know, he, he, he'll, he'll be involved, don't worry. Because once he gets into the feel of the building aspects of it, he'll be so sucked into it. He'll be yelling at us to go kill a zombie, he's busy. Yep, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> what about get you, Stan? How do you food. feel about Seven Days to Die? Spange. Spange! Did we lose Spange? I think we did. I think he fell asleep. Oh, probably all that talk about subsistence. Don't knock a game unless you try it. <laughs> like I said, I support but that game. But it doesn't have spaceships. <laughs> not, yeah, I know. I know. You know what? Not yet. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, see it. I can see it now. Somebody will make a mod where the hunters come in on Imperion spaceships and just blow your base off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nuked. Get dead. I needed my Imperion fix on playing. Yeah. That would be hilarious. You, you, you it spoiled it. Now, now i gotta, now I got to figure out another mod to write. <laughs> yeah. I could take a while, Magic. Now, Magic, <laughs> how much time have you gotten into Seven Days to Die? Um, well, I built that, I built that hunt, uh, that, the hunt, that hut on, uh, on, uh, Starvation. So that's, oh, that's more than I did. the time that you've actually had playing that game, it's just what we did that one day, fiddling around with it. Yep. Goofing off. The rest of the time, it was just me running around, trying to survive, and oh, not, yeah. not knowing how to, uh, actually control my character. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Might have to dig out some seven days to die just to so that we can get a better taste of it. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, I've got thousands upon thousands of hours playing that game, and it, it never gets a dull moment in it. I mean, from back in it was 5.0, 4.0, and whatever. I can't even remember it so long now. I took a, an entire town and converted it into a giant like castle keep and everything else it was amazing and I, it, it took me months to do it sorry guys i must go with my dog all right, all right buddy. Wally, catch you I have a good one. yeah so i'm definitely gonna have to get you to get you actually and be able to play that game we might spend some time off uh off camera just uh ourselves playing it just so you guys can get the feel of what this game is really about it's just amazing I mean, like I said, our community was, was based around Seven Days to Die at the time, and that's where it all started. It literally started with me playing Seven Days to Die, and then from there, and Jericho got into uh, the community. We started this all together, um, playing this game. It was... Uh -huh. you know, it's what enthralls the survival of all the other games that I like is based off of the survival aspects from Seven Days to Die. Imperion has it. Subsistence has it, Ark has it, but it all came from Seven Days to Die to begin with. That's fair enough. So if you haven't probably, played it, you, de I'm, you definitely got to give it a chance. Well, this is the thing, I haven't played it enough, like I said, three and a half hours is not really... I mean, for God's sakes, I've played Imperium probably 12 hours a day. Uh, <laughs> three and a half hours is... That's like getting up, having my first bag of me coffee, that is. <laughs> uh, just waking up uh, let's do some of this right. but you know I do got to give the developers credit too on all the time that they spend actually 
improving the Seven Days to Die game as well. You know, they spend so much time working on it, and I gotta say thank you to them for that, for one. It's just, every update has always had something spectacularly awesome to change, and improving it, not in changing it, I should say. Because I've the, the gameplay, the core gameplay of the game has never changed. Never. Not yet, and I hope it never will, because that core gameplay of the survival aspect of that game has been the foundation and blood of this game. It's yeah. pure survival, and it's amazing. You know, and I hope the auto turrets and all this stuff doesn't ruin it, because we've never had that kind of stuff, because it was all based on you. You had to make yourself survive. You didn't have things helping you survive. You literally just had to do it. <laughs> Yep. Magic, can I give you some advice there, buddy? What's up? Use a drone. Yeah, I was I was going to I, um I wasn't it, when I when I drill with this drill, I'm constantly cramming F. So I don't have I don't have a pile up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with a drone you're not stood there taking six point five rats. <laughs> oh, I I wasn't even looking at my radiation. Ah, well, there you go, Steve. <laughs> He should have left them alone. He would have just died. <laughs> uh, eventually, he would have, yeah. But, yeah, I'm just not that tight. Oh, that's it. Use your drone to knock you in the hole. That's clever. Step away from the hole. There you go. I'll show you a neat little trick as well. Now you're in uh, drone mode, you just tab out to your inventory whilst you've got your drone active. Okay. Just tab out. I did. It, there's a delay. Oh, right. Uh, it, it brings you up your radar. So that if you're stood there, uh, the radar appears in the top right-hand corner like it would do normally, even in drone mode. Oh, hey. That is spiffy. It, it just means that any uh, drones coming along, you'll be able to spot them before you just stood there going, uncontrolled a drone. <laughs> I'll get shot to pieces. <laughs> I only found out recently, so don't panic. It's nothing new, but... I'm not even sure if it's intentional, but it is certainly handy. Yeah, it is. I don't know, hopefully it stays in the game. Yeah, I kind of like it. I mean, it's not like it's game-breaking or unbalancing. I mean, you're in your drone, no. you should be able to still see your radar for Korean Layout, so it works for me. Yep. I don't see it. Right, it's all a heads-up display. Exactly. Uh. Yep, it was good. I'm back now, sorry, yeah. Oi. <laughs> hey, welcome back, buddy. Now, we were asking right, you, how do you feel about Seven Days to Die? I actually didn't manage to play it. <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> so that means we got to get you a copy of that game so you could try it out yourself, too. No, I got a copy. Do you remember we were trying to play it, but we were having all the server troubles, and I fell asleep. Right. Oh, was that Starvation? That was the Starvation. Yeah, yeah Starvation. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I've got the game. Well, once we get these guys actually playing the game, we'll get their honest opinions about it in a, another weekly blog for you guys. So right now we'll leave that on the hot plate, just sitting there while we get these guys playing that a little bit so they can get a, a good feel for it. Um, now, when it comes no, to... that could be... Go ahead. That could be my live stream for the week, too, is uh, Seven Days to Die. Since last week I did all uh, Imperion, I could do Seven Days to Die this week. No, that means I have to play with you. <laughs> Not just talk. That's that's wrong in all ways, by the way. Well, every time we live stream, I'm in the channel. We're always talking, and he's doing his thing, and, and I'm doing my thing over here, getting work done while he's playing around. And now, if you play Seven Days to Die, I actually have to play with him. Not just yeah. sit there and talk and get stuff done. Oh, you'll have to, then, will you? Man, we'll we'll leave that one on the, the we'll we'll pin that one. Think about that one. Uh, what do you think, Magic? How do you think our progress is going when it comes to our solar system? Ah, it's going great. Um, yeah, I, I wish I had more time this weekend to work on it, but uh, today I'm definitely going to be working on it. But it, it's it, it's it's there. I mean, we have the planets. Um, I think I need to just tweak the. Uh, the resources on each planet, and uh, it, we pretty much got it. Um, I'd like to replace more of the default POIs, the the stock POIs, with our own custom POIs. But I mean that we could add at any time. Right. Um, one thing I am 
going to have to do is we are going to change out some of the older model POIs for a lot of the newer ones. So I, 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 we need some new life flow on it. I, I, you know, the POIs, I like a lot of those new POIs, the new drone bases, the new, the, the, the new POIs that have come out, but then they still mix in the old ones that are too easy. The, the new ones are hard. I like the, the fact that the new ones are hard. <clears throat> So we need to find out which is in which cluster and add, change some of those out. I mean, I don't want to get rid of them all. It's part of the, the game. It's you know, it's what the developers put in. So I kind of like that idea that we keep true to that as well. But maybe less. Maybe cut it down to there's like only spawns one of the little armor oh, that only have four turrets or two turrets on it. But we have more of the ones that have six or twelve and are bigger and cooler and more dangerous, like Howl's House of Pandemonium. Which we have on every single one of our planets now, so it's going to be a trip, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, actually, today we are going to release the map. We are absolutely going to release the map on the server today. So you guys are going to be uh, testing out the new play fields and everything starting today, and get to see what we've been up to. That we've been keeping hidden from you guys for so long. Now the only thing we got to do is uh, add Wallenstein's asteroid field, and it'll be ready to go. I've already designed the asteroid field. I just got to remove all of the uh, drones and resources and carriers. There's like six oh. carriers that patrol it, and there's over 200 drones flying around it. But while yeah, leave it for Wally. I could do. I could do. I could leave it in there for Wally to start with. <laughs> um, but before be we release it, the one thing that we do have to do, me and Magic, before we can release it today, is add the temples for the player starts. Now, how this works is during the player start, you start off on a planet in your crash ship from the previous server, blah, blah, blah. Well, from there, you have to get off your home world and get to your moon to the temple. And the temple houses the teleporter that teleports you to Wallenstein's playfield where your starter vessel is waiting. So you have to make a small vessel, get off the, the, the starting planet, get to your moon, get to the teleporter, and get your actual capital vessel to start actually playing in the server. Uh, effectively, uh, approximately at level 7, you can get your CV. Yep, you still have to work for it, there's still the survival aspect, we're able to keep that in the gameplay. I really like that aspect. Mm. Yeah, I'm not knocking that, I'm just, it's the, the quickest you can get an SV in space is level 7, I believe. Which, we have, reset, we have changed the progression for um, XP that you get on the server, it's going to take time, believe me. You're not going to wipe out a base and sit there and farm an alien POI spawn pad for a half an hour and think you're going to level it. You're not. So you've made the XP bonus that you get less? Yes. Significantly. So it's an actual progression system now. Now that's not to say that you can't get a ride from someone else that's already gotten there. If you yep. wanted to, you can actually get involved in touch with one of your fellow Origin members and ask them to give you a lift to the moon so you can just get your ship and get going. I don't care. That's you know that's everyone's choice. However, but yeah. the option is there for anyone to play the game from vanilla survival style straight to our start, which is the CD vessel in the universe, and then you get to go off to your own thing. So we have it. So it's optional now that people can do it either way. You can just start in that's the CD and go, or you can do the survival aspect and grind your way there, which of course I'm going to do. I am going to be grinding it out when we put out the new season, which is still not for a couple of weeks. So we will be doing a lot of uh, showcases, walkthroughs, and uh, a couple of video blogs uh, here and there to fill the time up until release, and then we'll get it going, because the movie is our second priority right now. we got to finish that up before the release comes out, so that way you guys can enjoy the end of our 5.5 .5 season and to our 6.0 lives. Uh-huh. But anybody else got anything else there? Any topics you want to bring up? Not for me. Uh, not that I can think of. Do you have anything you want to span, span? Uh, I don't think so. I think we'll end this one here this week, guys, because, you know, I'm running out of things to talk about. <laughs> That's unusual. <laughs> oh, sorry, talk about. <laughs> I didn't say walk about, I said talk about. <laughs> oh, I was just, I got the about wrong. Uh -oh. Yeah, I'm going to get you in a boot. But anyways, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's community blog. It was quite a mouthful for me. Not used to everyone so quiet. 
But I hope you guys Sorry. enjoyed it. I hope you guys got some information out of this. It could be helpful. You and remember to play hard and game harder. And until next time, take it easy. Bye. Bye.